Okay, we're going to begin today with taking notes on the scientific method. This is just a review for those of you who might just need to refresh your memory about what the scientific method is and the parts of it um, which pertain to also like the lab report portion. So um, let's go ahead and begin by making a line across the top. Um, of your page and then writing scientific method as the title and then what you're also going to be doing is drawing a line down the length of the paper um, right around what like two and a half inches right here and then the larger space is on the right hand side so for example this is where the line would be so just draw the line right here. Now, what the scientific method is, is a way to ask and answer scientific questions logically and methodically. And this is done by conducting an experiment where you control as much as you can, so then that way you can um, eliminate any other factors that could affect your experiment. The steps are as you can see and you can go ahead and pause this video so that you can write this down and um, and then restart it again while I'm talking about it. So the first step is to ask a scientific or a question or a research question also known as a problem. So you're going to notice that there are multiple ways to say the same thing. So you need to identify what you're trying to to experiment on, right, what your question is. And then you need to do some background research. You need to do some um, searching online, looking through articles or um, scientific journals in order to help you to better understand the topic that you're, that you're wondering about. At this point, number three, you're going to make a hypothesis, which is an educated guess based off of what you've just researched. So. After doing that, number four, you're going to plan and conduct an experiment by, um, by also coming up with a list of materials that you're going to need in order to do that, and you're going to come up with a procedure that you think will work for it. Now, of course, if the procedure doesn't work when you do start to do the experiment, you might have to start over and uh, revamp your procedures and your materials. When you get to number five, you're going to be collecting your data and analyzing it, looking at it from all the different angles to see if whether or not there were any errors. And then you're also going to be drawing conclusions on whether or not your hypothesis uh, is supported by your data or not, whether or not your data is reliable or if you need to then possibly further your research, um, which might take you into a whole different experiment. Here is a flow chart that you do not have to draw, but I just wanted to show you the visual representation of the scientific method. So it starts with asking a question, doing some research before constructing a hypothesis of which you're testing your experiment, which could very well stay in this loop until eventually you figure out the best way to proceed and then you're going to analyze your data, draw conclusions, and see whether or not your hypothesis is correct. And then of course you need to communicate your results via um, like maybe a lab report of the conclusion or you might even need to do a speech or uh, a PowerPoint presentation, at which point this part usually spurs on um, more research. Now the scientific method has variables and these variables are called the independent variable, the dependent variable, and also um, control variables. Now the independent variable is an item that you change. I like to remember it as what I change. It's what you would change in the experiment. It's the thing that you are playing with and you're trying to figure out if it affects something. There is usually, there is only one IV in an experiment that is a good solid experiment. So only have one independent variable. The dependent variable is affected by hopefully your independent variable. What you are observing or what you are measuring is called the dependent variable. Now the last variable, the control variables, these are the things that you keep constant. It is the thing that, uh, the many things that you need to keep the same throughout the experiment for all the groups that you have. Now these groups, um, oh let's go ahead and take a look. So let's say you want to do an experiment on plant growth. 
Now, there are some variables that can affect plant growth. What do you think they are? The sun. Plants need sun, plants need water, and plants also need nutrients, so that's a bag of fertilizer. These are all potential independent variables. Now, remember, you can only choose one. You can't change all three because if you changed all three, then you wouldn't know which factor is affecting your growth of your plant. So, for purposes here, we're going to choose water. Now, how can we test to see if water affects plant growth? Well, we need to come up with a research question. We need to come up with uh, a testable question, right? And we need to format it in a way that is communicated in a, uh, by so that other people can understand what you're trying to experiment. So the format is how does the independent variable affect the dependent variable? Or you can also say what is the effect of the IV on the DV? For example, with our water and the plant growth, you would say how does water affect plant growth? That is your independent variable. The water is your independent, and your plant growth is what you're measuring. It is the dependent variable. Now, the control group is the group that has no experimentation. And there are two kinds of groups in every experiment. There's the control group that has no independent variable present. It is kind of the normal group, the group that you're not really going to do anything different from what it normally does or how it normally is. The experimental group, on the other hand, is the group where the independent, pre independent variable is present. And, for example, there are two groups of people, one that receives a placebo and one that receives a new drug. Which one is the control group and the experimental group? That is correct. The new drug is the, the group with the new drug is the experimental group, whereas the normal group that is not getting anything special is the control group. Now with this, you can see plant A is receiving 100 milliliters of water a day, which really isn't that much. And plant B is receiving even less. Now what is normal is that plants tend to get water, a little bit of water, almost every day. So which plant do you think is the control group and which is the experimental? Plant A is the control and plant B is the experimental because you are decreasing the amount of water that that plant is receiving than it normally would. Now, which group has the independent variable? Plant B. What control variable should you have for both of these plants? So some things you, you may want to control for both plants is to keep them in the same room, same spot in the same room, the same temperature, the same amount of light, and the same soil. Now, what would happen if you did not control these variables? Let's say you put them in two different rooms and you also changed the water. That's two different independent variables. If the growth changed uh, between the, if the growth between the two plants was different, can you really say that it was the water that made the plant grow or not grow? You can't because it could very well be in the fact that they're in different rooms and those two different rooms have some other kind of factor that's affecting the growth. So it's important that you control every variable except for the independent variable that you're trying to test for. Now, when you're doing your background research, it's important that you find resources that are credible. You don't want to find something that is just an opinionated site, okay? Now, some questions that you need to ask yourself when you're looking at a website is, who is responsible for this website? What are their credentials? Do they even have any? Some of the things that you can look at is the domain name. The domain name is the end of the URL. So .org, .edu, .com uh, are some examples. What you notice is some websites can be biased. Biased means opinionated. And you want to be careful about using biased websites because they're trying to push their agenda. EDU is fairly 
on point. Uh, EDU is owned by like universities and schools, uh, and so they do their best to try to show both sides. However, sometimes they allow their students, uh, students who are studying at a university, to have their own website with the EDU domain. So you also have to be careful that they, their source, that their information might very well be opinionated. So just be careful. Nothing is perfect. Now when choosing the right source, you need to have a source that is objective, not subjective. Okay, this is again objective meaning no opinion or no bias. And these are like scholarly journals, reports, statistics, governmental statistics is also okay. Um, to subjective means it's opinionated, so you want to kind of stay away from blogs, journals, media, TV, magazine, news. Now, there's a lot of those out there. So if you were to find some information in one of these, you don't want to cite the blog or the magazine. Maybe what you need to do is you need to find the source that is provided by that uh, like blog and you need to cite that source, don't cite the blog. If you can't find any resources provided by that blog, then you need to look for the info elsewhere. One other thing that tells you whether or not you should use a source is whether or not the time and date, is it clear, is it recent? You don't want to use information that's 20 years old um, if you're trying to do something uh, presently that is continuously changing. Okay, So just be aware that time and date could very well make your information not relevant. Wikipedia, Wikipedia. You want to make sure that you don't cite Wikipedia. For the most part, the information might be correct there, and most of the time it is, but you need to go to their resources, find the information, and then cite that source. Now, after you do your research, and now you're ready to make your hypothesis, and now you're ready to make your prediction of what you think will happen in the experiment, because now you have all this information to back up why you think it's going to happen. If you use information from a site, then you need to make sure you cite it. Now, when you're doing your hypothesis, the best way in order to word it would be if the independent variable increases or decreases, then the dv either increases or decreases. You have to choose how it's affected because for educated reasons, okay? Just to give you an example, not that you have to write this down, an example with the water would be if the amount the plant is watered decreases, so I'm choosing decreases, then the amount of growth a plant will have will also de decrease because, and as you can see, I have a very long explanation which is not even completed. There's multiple sentences and it could go on for a while and I might very well need to cite something if I did use some information that I had read. So just to give you an idea of how to write a hypothesis. The next step is to list your equipment. Specify the quantity and the size and you need to also put them into bullet points. Procedures should be numbered and you need to be direct. Uh, kind of like pick this up, do this, measure this, weigh this. You don't have to be nice, it doesn't have to say please. Um, you need to include amounts and units. And this is just a way for someone else who's reading all this can actually pick up your lab and replicate it. After doing the experiment, you're going to be making, or actually you should have already created data tables to collect the data from your experiment, from which you should calculate graphs to represent your data visually and then you need to do some calculations possibly. After you do that you're going to analyze your data, discuss errors, make improvements, draw conclusions, further your the possibility with more questions on how you can uh, continue your experimentation into different areas. And okay, so that is the end of our video. Be ready to present your home fund for a stamp and be prepared to use this information in the classroom the next time I see you. All right, good job.